Hello world, it's the Surfing Scratcher here bringing you another video connecting the world of maths with Scratch. If you haven't already, check the description below for previous videos as this one is part of a series. In this video, we're going to be exploring expanded notation in our space value game. So when an object pops on the screen, it's going to be worth some points. We need to capture those in variables across the bottom. So let's get stuck into it. Here we are in our space value project. You recall that when we left our last video that we had our project here and we popped our space objects. Uh, they were popping beautifully, making a nice sound, but our scores aren't updating. They should be, our units should be incrementing by one, our tens by 10, our hundreds by 100, and our thousands by 1,000. Not happening. So let's sort it out right now. Cool. So a great starting point when we're counting and we're learning to count is we usually start with the units. So we may as well do the same thing in our project here. So we know that when we see a balloon, we press it, or we click it. Uh, let's look at, in our code where we can find that happening. And that is indeed here, when the sprite is clicked, okay? When the unit's balloon is clicked. We play that popping sound, we hide it, and then we broadcast the message. Now, broadcasting a message is a little bit like when Surfing Scratcher's mum comes in in the morning and yells, Hey, Surfing Scratcher, get up out of bed! Now, Surfing Scratcher is sometimes awake, and if he hears that, maybe after the third time, we'll get up out of bed and start the day. But if Surfing Scratcher is still asleep, maybe for those first two times, Surfing Scratcher won't hear that message, and then won't get out of bed. So, it's very important that when we try to say the messages, or tell a message to somebody, that they need to be listening to it, they need to hear it. So, at the moment, um, in our project, we're yelling all these messages, we're saying all these messages, unit popped, unit popped, but actually, everyone's still asleep. No one's listening to that message at the moment. So we need to go sort that out. Okay. So before we go ahead and do that, um, I've gone ahead and created a little plan of what we're going to be doing. Okay, so I've just got our stage, our variables, and our sprites set up here. Pause the video to um, probably digest that uh, a little bit more. So we know that when we've got a balloon here on the screen, and I'll just get our balloon up here, uh, when we pop it, we need our units to increment by one, okay? One value. And I'll rep I like to like write that down in an English sentence, just what I've said there. So when a unit pops, we need to change the units by one. That's the first piece of code that we actually need to do. So let's go across and let's actually implement uh, that English sentence. So when a unit pops, well, we need to listen to that message. Now we could do that in here, in our units balloon, but so we're creating clones and sometimes um, it is deleted before we get a chance to actually increment it or another one appears and sometimes we might actually add two instead of just wanting to add one. So we're gonna do it in a different place. And I think the best place to do it um, is in where our headings are here because they're actually related to it. So we want our place value headings, okay, to start listening to that message units popped. So let's go to our events and let's scroll down when the green flag, blah, 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 blah. Nope, when I receive the message. When I receive, not hundreds popped, but our unit popped. Okay, when I receive unit popped. If we go back to our plan, when a unit pops, now we're doing something about it. Well, now we're listening to it at least. We need to change the units by one. Well, we know that the units are a variable. So if I go across to the variables here, look, there is our unit. Uh, we're not gonna set it to one, we wanna change it. So we wanna like uh, add one to it already. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna bring that block out. We're not gonna change the game time seconds. We're going to be changing the units today. And yes, we just wanna change it by one. Now, if I press the green flag, with any luck, we see a balloon, oh, pop, pop, oh, lots of ones there. Okay, there are four ones, and now our score is four. So that is working beautifully. Now, there is a special condition for when our unit hits 10. Like right there, it's going to be a little bit tricky for me to put that, but when our units are, there we go, 10, um, we don't actually want to have 10 units there in place value. We usually regroup. We need to push that 10 across into the tens place. That's what we're going to be doing in our expanded notation form anyway. So again, if we go back to our plan here, um, we've got our units there. So we're going to update our units. When that is equal to 10, we actually want that 
to go across to our tens place. Now my English sentence that I have for us there is if the units are equal to 10, which is they are now, then we need to regroup by adding a 10 and we need to reset the units back to zero. So there's a lot going on there, um, but let's break it down into small steps. So let's look at this first part. If the units equal to 10. Cool. Well, I know that there is actually a code block in here that starts with that if uh, condition. It's in our control statements and there is an if statement here. Now an if statement has this funny looking uh, puzzle piece here, almost like a, a squashed hexagon. Um, I mean, it is a hexagon and it's quite squashed. So what we need to do is when we make a comparison between two things, we need an operator. We need to find the operator that has that equal sign. Okay, because we're going to be comparing our units, our variable of units, when they're equal to 10. Not 50, but 10. Okay, not 100 either. When they're 10. Okay, so if units is equal to 10, then we're going to go inside this sandwich here, this code sandwich. Okay, we're going to do the business that's in here. Okay, what business do we need to do? Well, we need to regroup by adding a 10. Well, I think that down the track, we're going to have a message that's doing this exact same thing, but for 10 popped. So I reckon that we should just use the message or say the message out aloud that a 10 has popped, even though, yes, okay, we didn't actually pop it, but we can reuse the same code, which is pretty nice practice. So we're going to go ahead and do that. Let's go grab that event. I'm going to broadcast the message. Hey, not a hundred, but a 10 popped. Okay. And that's how we're going to regroup by adding a 10. Cool. So the second part of that is done. Now we want to reset the units back to zero. Okay. Well, we're talking about our units again. That's our variable. So we need to go back into our variables and let's reset our variable back to zero. Now notice I've popped it inside the if statement here. It's not outside. It's definitely inside the block. And again, we need to set our units back to zero. Great. Now this won't work if I press it because our units are already equal to 10. And if I change our units by one, it's going to be 11 and it will never get inside this statement. So it's a little bit buggy. For those out there who want a bit of a challenge, you could probably work out another control statement to make this less buggy. All right, so what I will do is I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna change the units, hopefully to nine, we'll go eight, that'll be fine, okay? And oof, I'm gonna click this once and it should go to nine, perfect. Uh, I'm gonna click it again. Of course, a 10 won't pop up because we don't have the tens code in there yet, but at least our units, I'm expecting that to go to zero. So let's have a look at what that does. Okay, there we go, our units went indeed back to zero, which is exactly what we want. Why stop there? Let's actually get our tens planet in action now. So what we need to do is I'm going to right click on this code block. I'm gonna right click on it and I'm gonna duplicate it because we've done all the heavy lifting there. Now, if we go back to our plan, all the variable names here, we just need to change them uh, for the next place value. So where our units are, we can make them all tens and where our 10 is, let's make that the 100. So when a 10 pops, change the tens by, well, 10 this time. If the tens is equal to 100, then regroup by adding a 100, okay? And reset the tens, oops, the tens back to zero, okay? So that's getting a little bit messy with our plan there, but it's the same idea. So when I receive tens popped, we now want to change our tens by 10, okay? If our tens, if 10 tens, and I hope you can have a go at what you think 10 tens might be equal to, but let's get our variable in tens. If I've got 10, if I count in tens 10 times, that's gonna take me to the number 100. Cool, so if our tens is equal to 100, I need to say another message. Yes, our hundreds are popped. There's our hundreds, great. And then we want to reset our tens back to zero, okay? Look at this, the pattern is repeating. This is our place value pattern. You could do the same thing for the next place value column and the one after. And I'm actually gonna get you to do that. I'm not gonna do that on the screen. That's gonna be up to you to do by duplicating that code block two more times and adjusting the variables where you need to do that. But let's just test out that it works, of course. So let's put our units, not up there, let's just make them pretty close 
to 10. Okay, so I'm going to press the unit here. Uh, we pressed it once, pressed it twice. Now the next press, I'm expecting it to go back to zero and we should have a 10 uh, in there. Let's have a look. And there we go, yeah, it works. So we've got our 10 now press, uh, sorry, we're now equal to 10 and our units back to zero. I can keep, uh, sorry, I can keep adding my units here. And then when I press my 10s popped, I can actually add more there. Let's actually see if it works in the game now. There's our unit, perfect. Our 10s are working and our thousands aren't working and our hundreds aren't working, but our ones and our 10s are working. And look, they're updating. So what I'd like you to go ahead and do now is hook up the last two place value columns. Um, and in the next video, we're actually going to be looking at now taking all these values and smushing them together to create our final score. If you enjoyed this video, please give me a thumbs up. And if you want to know uh, whenever I release a video in another series or for the next video here, press that subscribe button. But until then, I'm off to find a wave. Take it easy.